Oh, come on. If you love Jesus in this room tonight, make some noise. Y'all can do better than that. Come on. If you love Jesus tonight, make some noise. I'll give you a pass. It was raining today. <laughs> all right. How we all doing tonight? We feeling good? I think I see people out there. I think I can hear you. Hey, guys, I am really, really excited to bring the word to you tonight. As always, before I even open up my mouth, Pastor Clark, I honor you. Thank you for giving me the platform, brother. You are incredible. You guys have the best youth pastor in the world. Just saying, I'm biased. He was mine, too. Can I get an amen? Yes. Yes. I also love his shirt that he's wearing, too. Give him a high five before he leaves here. Check it out. Right now, who today want to take a nap? Did anybody nap today or, like, sleep in because it was raining out and it was just, like, the rain against your AC was putting you to sleep? Yo, I hit the gym for the first time this week. It was raining today. I'm mad tired, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to front at all. Like, I want to go home, take a nap right now, and just cuddle up in my covers. So that is the reality that I'm walking into. But listen to this. As I'm thinking about, like, as we're, all this is happening, I'm thinking about vacation my wife and I just went on vacation a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we went down to Miami. Come on, Miami, where it was 85 every day, and it was raining, but it was sunny and hot as heck out there, and, yo, know, it was incredible. Um, love, love, love having our time down there. And as we were on our way to Miami, I want to share a story with you, because it just, it screamed, like, sermon illustration and a story I had to share, because it was incredible. Uh, we're going to the airport, and if you've flown before, you know that you need to get to the airport a little bit early just because of the check-in lines and then TSA for security and all that stuff so you don't miss your flight. So Alicia and I, we go to the airport. We got TSA pre-check, you know what I'm saying? Like, we did that ahead of time. We prepared, and we were getting ready to show up to check in our bags. And as we walked into the airport, I'm not even kidding. The line was probably a couple hundred people deep just to check our bags. Now, guys... This wouldn't, you know, stir panic in anybody's hearts, but we had an hour to catch our flight. And when we were looking at this line, I was almost irritated there were so many people that were flying at the same time as me. I'm sitting here like, come on, bro. Like, what, guys, what, what are we all doing right here? It's a Monday. We're usually all working, whatever, but people are trying to travel again. And there were literally TV crews. Like, there were three cameras, I counted them, with, like, anchors with a microphone just like this saying, coming to you live from Logan Airport, right? They were reporting on how crazy long the lines were. So we're standing in line, and I'm looking at Alicia, I'm like, babe, we, we better miss our flight. Like, it's about to be it. Like, we better catch the next flight to Miami, waste our time, whatever. And as we're standing in line, a thought crossed my head. And I'm sitting there, I'm standing there going, wait a minute. We're supposed to be flying first class. See, what happened was that we had a, a trip that was planned for the summer before, and COVID happened, it canceled everything. So we had a lot of money and airfare that we just had to use before it expired. And as we were standing in line, I remembered that we had actually paid for first-class tickets to use all of this money that was on our accounts. And I thought, wait a minute, there has to be a way for me to bypass this line since I paid for first class in advance. See, God provided for us in a way where we never would have been able to provide those tickets on our own. And he gave us access to something that we are freely giving up. I stood in line there going, I don't need to stand in this line. God, you've already gone before me and provided so I can walk up to this first class line, drop my bags off, and make my flight. And we did, thank God. We didn't waste money, and it was awesome. But I want to encourage you with something tonight. The same God that went before us, the same God that provided for us, just in our way to go into Miami, is the same God who's gone before us tonight. Yeah, I believe he's here. He's already moving. We've been praying over these seats. We've been praying over this room. And God wants to show up in your lives tonight. And guys, I'm excited, yo, because I know when I'm tired and when I want to go to bed, God's going to speak something good to us tonight. Amen? Amen? All right. Thank you very much. So check out. Before we jump in and dive into our word tonight, uh, we're going to be continuing the book in our, in our Exodus series through the book of Exodus it's been phenomenal. Pastor Clark, Kaylee, y'all have been bodying these sermons. It's been amazing. And I'm honored to continue that tonight. And as we're jumping in, I want to ask you a question. Because I already know the answer for myself. Who here is good at being patient? This is not rhetorical. I want to see a, I want to see a raise of hands. If you would say, I am good at being patient, let me see them. All right. So by default, if you're not good at being patient, let's see those hands go up. Guilty as charged. That's me right there. I am not good at all at being patient. Patient. And tonight, um, here's the thing. 
Uh, another story, I, Alicia and I recently bought a house and we had bought a fence, you know, to go the rest of our yard to fill it up so that way our dog can run around and not run away. And so we bought a fence several weeks ago. And, and, and they were saying, okay, it'll be here in four weeks, it should be good. And so I show up this week to pay for the fence. They were like, nah, bro, we, we backed up even more now. You got to wait another couple of weeks. And I'm sitting here going... Um, I'm very frustrated right now. I know the end result. I paid for it. My yard's about to be fenced in, but it's not lining up on my timeline. It's not fitting into my schedule. And uh, listen, when, we, when we're impatient, we make irrational decisions. Yeah, I didn't go and like cuss anybody out and go crazy, but I was irritated, right? And, and, and the people of Israel, we're going to find out tonight, were impatient on God that God didn't fit into their timetable. And so what happened? They made irrational decisions. So if you have your Bibles with me, you can open them now to the book of Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. You can pull open your phone and swipe over to the Bible app and you can open it there. Exodus 32. And uh, if you just want to be super holy and look at the screens and follow along and pretend like you're being spiritual, that's cool too. Exodus 32, starting in verse 1. I want to just give you a little bit of context. We're going to set the scene as to where we are. In chapter 24, the people of Israel waited for Moses and some of the leadership to go on Mount Sinai. God had called a meeting with his people, and so the leadership went. And as Moses and the leaders of Israel are meeting with God, Israel is waiting at the base of the mountain. For 40 days and for 40 nights, they waited on Moses to come back down from meeting with God. Except they couldn't wait any longer. And here's where we find ourselves in verse 1 of chapter 24. The Bible says this. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. The same God that went before them to deliver them from the hand of the Egyptians the same God that went before them to split the Red Sea in two, the same God that provided manna from heaven, the same God who went before his people is no longer good enough for the people of Israel because he didn't fit into their schedule. Aaron answered them, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron had saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. And afterward they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Well, now watch what happens in verse 7. Then the Lord, the one true God, said to Moses, Go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have, quicked, they have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, whom brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked People. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you, Moses, into a great nation. Yo, God was big mad. He was big mad at his people. But I'm thankful for people like Moses because in verse 11 it says, But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, God. Relent and do not bring disaster on your people. He says, remember, remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. 
to whom you swore by your own name. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all of this land I promised them. And it will become their inheritance forever. And this is where we're going to come to a close. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. The title of my talk tonight is Take a Bow. Take a Bow. If you got the reference, I commend you, but it's not 2009, so listen to Prophetess Rihanna on the way home and you'll understand. Because they look so dumb right now. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you. Lord, for your word tonight. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would go before us the same way you went before your people. God, I pray that you would speak to us clearly and concisely. Help me get out of the way and speak to us tonight. Speak to this man standing here tonight, God, to cast away every calf, every idol, and worship you and you alone. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that everybody said amen and amen. Big idea tonight, if you have, forget everything that I said, Chris, you don't have to play right now, bro. I'm sorry. Um, We're almost done. Just kidding. We got like 15 more minutes. Big idea tonight, if you forget everything I said, is this. The only one worthy of our worship is God. The only one worthy of our worship is God. The reality is, is that all of us were created to worship you guys. Every single one of us that has ever walked the face of the earth was created to worship. The question is a matter of if. The question is a matter of what. What is it that we worship? Worship is simply more than singing. It's more than what what we do in church when we come on a Friday night or a Sunday morning. Worship is what our lives revolve around. If you want to be an incredible athlete, guess what? Your life will typically revolve around all of your practices and your training to be the best athlete you can be. If you want to be the best musician, your life will revolve around that. Worship is simply more than just standing up here, lifting our hands on a Friday night and going home. It's not reserved to a Friday, not reserved to a church experience. Just like we talked about last week, the people of God worshipped Moses. They saw Moses as their leader and they worshipped him. And Moses, guess what, failed them. Moses didn't fit into their timeline. They turned to Aaron. Aaron failed them. Every leader that stands before you, if you worship them, they will fail you. The only one that will never fail you is the Son of Almighty God. And so as we stand before them tonight, as the people of Israel stand there, they say, Moses, where are you? God didn't fit into their timetable that they had planned in their heads. The people right after God wasn't there and Moses wasn't there for them to worship, they turned to something else. This leads me to believe that all of us have no issue worshiping something. From thousands of years ago, if they were to worship a calf, guess what? We don't have an issue with worshiping. The question is, what is it that we worship? And here's where it gets real. The devil understands this. And he understands that if you can control what you worship, he can control your life. Yeah, 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 you might not bow down. You read this story in verse 2, and you're like, oh, my goodness, yeah. They bowed down to a golden calf. Like, oh, my goodness, it was, it was made of gold. It was, a, it was an animal. That's so stupid. You might not go home and bow down to a golden calf, but you will do- bow down to your phone. Yeah, yeah, you will bow down to somebody in a relationship that's giving you your worth that you think is, is their entire, your entire world. You will bow down to a substance that you'll take to feel something on the inside, but it'll always leave you empty. You might not bow down to a golden calf, but you will bow down to something. Yeah, all of us have a golden calf in our lives, you guys. Every single one of us in this room have something that we're always tempted to turn from God and bow down to. And it ends here tonight. Yeah, yeah, it ends here tonight. The question that I want to ask you is, what is the golden calf in your life? We often worship what is most convenient to us, what's beneficial to us. When we worship something or someone that's not God, guess what? We will never, ever be fulfilled. And I love hearing that people try justifying it too. Yeah, Aaron even said there's going to be a feast to the Lord this next day. As they're bowing down to a piece of gold that they had made from their own hands, they were still trying to approve it by God. Yeah, we're going to worship God, the Lord. 
as they're bowing down to a calf. They tried to justify what they were doing. And the same God who went before, I'm keeping it real, right? The same God that went before Alicia and I that provided the finances for us to go on this trip and fly first class and have an incredible time together. That same God that went before us wasn't the same God I bowed down to during the week when I would spend three hours scrolling on TikTok. I'm guilty as charged. None of us in this room are outside of that. All of us have an issue with worshiping something. Can we go a little bit deeper tonight? Yes? I don't need your permission anywhere. We're going to go. Uh, and, and, and here's the thing, too. Some of us in this room worship things that have no control over us. What do you mean by that, Dan? Well, I mean, in Romans chapter 8, right, and we, I actually read it last week. Didn't even think about including this in the message. But in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39, we learn our identity in Jesus. And so when we're followers of Christ, guess what? There, the Bible is very clear in saying that there is neither life nor death. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing has legal authority over our lives unless we grant access to it. We sit here and we go, God, I, I'm going to worship you and you alone. But then we turn and we give our phones, we give our addiction to social media, we give fear access in our lives when it has no authority over us. This golden calf had no authority over the people of Israel until they gave it the authority that it didn't deserve. Some of us in here worship things that might be good. We want to be successful or have a healthy family, and those things are great. But when it becomes the top priority in our life and the rightful place that only God deserves, it becomes a sin. And the only way to deal with that is there has to be atonement that is made for it. What is the golden calf in your life and how, how on earth do we deal with it? I can't help but think that God doesn't have a similar reaction that he did in Exodus 32 where he looks at us as his creation and he says, I created them. I put value in them. I put purpose in them. And they're freely giving that up because they're turning to something else to worship when it doesn't deserve it. I can't help but think that God isn't disappointed, that he's not frustrated, that he's not angry. But we have good news, and we'll get to that later. The only one that is worthy of our worship, young people, is God. The only one that is worthy of our worship is God. The only one that is worthy of our worship is God. Can we go a little bit deeper? Yes, sir. Feel good? Yeah. We're tracking? We're not going to get too much into it tonight. I don't want to, I don't want to steal her thunder, but Kayla's going to hit it next week. I, I love, so all, we know what happens. We, we understand what goes down in the beginning of this chapter. Understand the decisions that were made. But I love the interaction that God and Moses have here. I love how Moses speaks to God with such confidence. Saying, God, remember of the promises that you made to your people. God, listen, he was ready to end it. Over and over and over after God delivered them from Egypt, they would complain and complain and complain. God was ready to end the relationship, the covenant that he had made with his people until Moses stood and mediated between the people and with God. Do I think God actually forgot the promise that he made? Heck no. He don't forget. God did not forget the covenant that he made with his people. Do I also think, though, that there's power in praying and reminding God of his promises over our lives? Absolutely. Yeah, the word of God is full of promises that he has made over every single one of us. But guys, we're never going to know them if we never open our Bibles. Right? His word is full of promises that he speaks over every single one of us. But we'll never know them if we never actually get in his word. I know you might have heard it before, but it'd be like having an iPhone and only using it for a calculator. There is so much there. There is so much life-transforming uh, content and promises and, and things that God speaks and learning how to live and walk with him. And we never know it if we expect a preacher or, or a youth staff member to, to give us that. You have access to the promises of God over every single one of your lives. And when Moses interceded for the people, God relented his punishment. Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. And although there are consequences that we need to face for the decisions that we make, guess what? Moses still sought God's favor in the midst of all of that. 
The only one that is worthy of our worship is God. And, and, and what are we going to do about it? This, Chris, Ben, whatever, you guys can come up now and play something spiritual. I'm coming to a close. The only one worthy of our worship is God. And the good news is that the story doesn't end here. Yeah, we keep on reading. If you guys can follow with me in chapter 32, verse 30, go all the way down to the end of the chapter, and uh, here's how it turns out. Here, after Moses comes back down from the mountain, after they have a conversation with the people, and all kinds of crazy stuff goes on. I mean, it, guys, you read what happens between verses 14 and 30, and you're just going to sit there like, oh, my goodness. Like, that's in the Bible, <laughs> right? Like, it, it's way more entertaining and, and kind of crazy to believe that happened. And, and I, I love the response that Moses has in verse 30, and, and I love how the story just doesn't end with the people wanting to basically have their relationship with God severed at that point. In verse 30, this is what the word says. The next day, after all that craziness went down, Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but now... I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. Yeah, they have made themselves gods of gold. But watch this in verse 32. But now, please forgive their sin. And if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. And the Lord replied to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place that I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. Moses, can I teach you for a minute here, guys? Moses went up on the mountain. Yeah, I, I would read over that over and over, and I felt the Holy Spirit this week say, you need to stay on this verse. And he showed me something that I had never understood before. It said, Moses went up to the Lord. Yeah, this leads me to believe that he went back up the mountain to make atonement for his people. He even offers his own life as a sacrifice for his people so God wouldn't break the covenant with the people of Israel. This is so familiar to me because when I read my Bible, I go to the New Testament and I go to the Gospels and I learn of a man who goes up on the mountain, who sought the favor of God, who made atonement for the people who didn't deserve to be made atonement for. I see a man who carries the cross and goes on a mountain to say, God, these are your people. These are your people. And this man sought the face in the favor of God. And he hung on a cross and gave up his life freely and made atonement for you and for me. And his name is Jesus. Come on, I don't think you're understanding where this comes from tonight. Ever since thousands and thousands of years ago, God understood that there would never be a man who could make atonement for his people because they would always bow down to a golden calf. They would always bow down and worship other things that weren't God. And so there had to be a price to be paid for the sin they had committed. And so he sends his own son, Jesus. Jesus who goes up on a mountain. I couldn't believe it when I read it. I said, I know of a man who went up on a mountain to make atonement for his people. And God himself made the payment for you and for me. The same people that bow down to TikTok, the same people that bow down to our weed addiction, the same people who bow down and give access to fear and anxiety, have enough power over our lives. Guess what? This same God said, I love you so much. And in the midst of your sin, my son Jesus will seek my face and he'll make atonement on your behalf. And then what do we do? Yeah, we still bow down to other things. We still bow down to other things that aren't worthy of our worship. 
our only response is a life of worship when we understand the jacked up places we've been. Our only response can be worship to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Listen, I've been in moments in my life where I would go to church on a Sunday, where I'd come to youth group on a Friday, and I would bow down to God, and then I'd go home the next day, and I'd bow down to a toxic relationship to give me value when he already looked at me and said, son, I love you. I don't know where you're at tonight. I don't know what your golden calf is. I don't know what it is that you struggle with, but listen, Jesus has already paid the price for your sin. He has already paid the price for us tonight. And our only response can be for us to bow down to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. So all over this room with our eyes closed, with our heads bowed, yeah, we're gonna have a moment with you tonight, God. Hallelujah. Some of you in this place are here for the first time, second time. Some of you in this place have been here your whole life. And you're sitting here thinking, I, I don't have an issue with this. I, I, I see what you're trying to say to me, Daniel. I understand it. And I'm living for Jesus. And that's great and all. But you won't come to the place where you can say that I'm, I, I still bow down to whatever your golden calf is in your life. I know every single one of us in here knows it. I know every single one of us in here has it. And so tonight, my, my only question, my only request, my only response would be, would you give God a chance? Would you take that golden calf and, and in that chapter, Moses takes it and he burns it and he crushes it and he says no more. He casts it aside. He said, we are to worship God. We are to rededicate our lives to Jesus, to, to God. And, and in the same way tonight, my encouragement, my prayer for every single one of us would be that we would not bow down to that golden calf in our life, but we would bow down to the only one who is worthy of our worship, and that is God and God alone. So Lord, we just come before you tonight. God, I pray whether it be through accountability, whether it be through having healthier boundaries set up to speak practically of this. Yeah, tonight we cast aside, we, we, we are no longer to bow down to the golden calves that are in our lives. God, I pray that tonight and that we would sit and we would realize that you are the only one that is worthy of our worship. For some of us, that might mean rededicating ourselves to you tonight. We understand that we're not perfect. We understand that we're going to mess up. We get that. And you get that, most importantly. And so we just receive the gift of salvation that has been promised us through Jesus, that has already been paid for through your Son. We receive that tonight. We walk in the reality of that. We don't just receive that gift and then put it to the side and bow somewhere else. God, we we truly grab on to that gift and we say, Jesus, I'm yours. I'm going to bow to you and you alone. And we're careful to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, God. You are the only one that is worthy of our worship. We surrender our lives to you tonight on this summer night. We love you. We trust you. It's in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen.